Welcome to the General's Gentlemen. Hello, hello, everybody. We are here at the Grand Finals with Mr. Dev M, also known as Cash, Cash Grab, as of today, versus Mr. Paul, who is making a return to the finals this week, looking to defend his title. Uh, we have a classic um, matchup here, as in the factions that these two players are most known for, the Dev N being his really aggressive USF, and uh, OKW for Paul. Uh, and this is quite a quite a bit of a grudge match, considering all the um, history between these two players in OCF. And joining me now is Mr. Siez, Mr. Ming Li, leader of RTN himself. Welcome, Siez. Hey, what's up, Momo? Uh, luckily, I got back from my sister's birthday dinner pretty much just in time to hit up the NA Grand Finals. So Glad uh, you're here. I, yeah, I was looking over the brackets a second ago because I basically didn't get to watch much, if any, of NA. Uh, looks like Dev M had a pretty difficult bracket. And uh, Paul, being the number one seed, I think had a little bit easier of a road. But uh, it'll be very nice to see the two. Like This was the number one seed and number two seed, right? I oh, no, Ivan was number two. My bad. Ivan. Yeah, was I two. think Paul was number one. But yeah, Paul's definitely number one. Yeah. Um, I know it's tough. I mean, this is an NA tournament, and we have one NA player versus a player from Portugal. Um, I don't know. Where do you draw the line? Do you just support your home 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 region or your, fav your favorite player? It's it's tough. I I probably have to go with Dev M. Okay, if you're going to go with Dev M, I'll go with Paul. Uh, I'll rep North America here. Although, you know, I have... I don't know, are we allowed to pick favorites as casters? I guess as long as we keep it balanced, right? As long as you root for one and yeah, I root for one. Yeah, fair and balanced, fair. like Fox News. Yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> exactly, dude. All right, so we do have just the standard openings here for both players. Just whatever you can build as uh, USF, which is just the Rifleman, right? <laughs> and we actually do have a Kubo opening from Mr... Uh, Paul. Mr. Paul. I mean, Kubel is yeah. really, really strong. He's actually rushing the fuel now here, which will be really easy for him to harass, considering the Rieschelon can't really do much versus Kubel, unless he well, decides yeah, on. He needs to push him out of that green cover. Uh, the I don't know about pushing though won. when you're not supported. Like yeah, he's pushing, I mean, but he's just taking more damage. Yeah, he couldn't have won against the green cover squad anyway, though. Either way, I think the Kubel needed some support to make that like yeah. an actually successful push. Devm still caps up his fuel, which is important. Um, Ball picks Very up important. one model loss, but it's just one RE model. Not really a big deal. I wonder if Devm is aware of the changes on this map, especially considering the uh, changes to the garrisons here at both uh, fuels. I think he's I'm been sure playing he knows enough. By now. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I, I know he's been scrimming with Hans a lot, so I'm sure they've practiced this map at least a little bit. I don't know that I've yeah, seen them practicing definitely. this map specifically on stream, but Devm already going for Paul's fuel, though. Very aggressive with that rifle. It probably ran straight from spawn all the way over there. Yeah, the, the blows are being exchanged even in the first few seconds of this game, and... I'm pretty sure we're just going to be seeing the standard builds from both players here. Four Rifleman, uh, LT Captain from Mr. DevM, maybe even a skip to Captain if his fuel situation isn't so hot, and a Luke's Rush from Paul. Uh, this Rifleman's not looking too too hot here, getting really low. He's yeah, been retreating really late today. In. Oh my that's, gosh, that's going to die. That's so oh dangerous. My. Okay, he actually got punished this time for retreating his squad really late. So that's, well, that's very, one of those very tough for yeah, I was gonna say it's one of those situations where you have to retreat based on the health of your squad, not necessarily the number of models, models in your squad. Yeah, that was just awful. He actually just, did. He just lose another squad too. Uh, you're not ahead of me, are you? Where's like three ten, three eleven, three twelve? No, I'm just thinking his his unit count looks too low. But it must have been he had an earlier retreat and he's just bled out because he hasn't. Because he usually goes for full rifle, but actually. My bad, he's going for Lieutenant now. He actually almost yeah, lost his other Rifleman at the bottom fuel. Yeah, both of his other two retreated very low. So he's actually bled very, very much already in the early game. And Paul's uh, Sturms, they definitely need to get healed, but they're almost all the way up to Vet 1. Yeah, but thankfully USF gets free squads, so, you know, right? That's right, right guys? Yeah, they get free, free squads. squads. I don't know. 
Our free Look squads. At that. Number uh, one free squad of the game. <laughs> Round of applause. The M20 is building, so it should have a good impact on the game. The SWS is out for Paul. Again, I'm assuming there's going to be a mechanized regiment being built here. Yeah, I think the Lukes would be a great answer to the lieutenant play that DevM um, seemingly always opts for, or most frequently opts for, just because you, with the LT, you have to tech captain to get any kind of hard counter to your Lukes. Right, exactly. And it doesn't help when your fuel is constantly being harassed because timing is everything, guys, especially in a matchup where both sides are emphasizing a rush of their light vehicles. One that counters the other, if we may say, at least in this instance. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as long as the Lukes doesn't hit an M20 mine, it definitely hard counters the M20. Uh, the best that DevM can probably hope for is getting the Bazooka squad out of there and using it to maybe push the Lukes away. Chat going crazy with the free squads, Bobo. Well, we all like our SpongeBob references now. That's right. This is NA. We grew up on SpongeBob, fam. All right, the M20 does find the Kubel. I don't and know if he's chase. Sturms... There is no counter to it. He should be chasing. I was say, the Sturms got really uh, in close on that LT squad. Oh, Probably yeah. need to retreat, though, because they're super low health, and M20 is right there. Hey, he's playing it kind of... Okay, he retreats now. He retreats now. No, he's not making the same mistake that Mr. DevM did earlier. I'm sure Paul is feeling very feels-good man about his situation in the game. He's got his mechanized regiment up. He should have a Luke's in just a minute here. Uh, even if his fuel gets cut off, he's not in the worst bind. So yeah, he's he going to chase like off this other Volt, though. His, um, Paul's map control has been great. He's already has Devin Blood down to 420 VPs. He's looking at what, like a seven minute Luke's uh, from this map control? About, yeah. But Devin's actually electing to hop out with his M20 crew and decap the field. Good usage of the vehicle crews they're given to the USF players. So I'm glad, I'm happy to see that. Would you consider that a free squad too, Momo? The vehicle crew? <laughs> yeah. There's actually a shark <laughs> spot up right next to that M20. Yeah. I think M20 is getting out of there in time, though. That's Kubel being a really big nuisance on the bottom, chasing away those REs and might even wipe them on retreat if Paul wow, chooses yeah, to get really aggressive. I think he's probably just gonna. Up. I think he's just gonna cap up that fuel, though. And Paul picking a Doctrine picks up the JLI. Wow, he actually elects to pop the JLI rather than. Building the Lukes? Does this mean he's going Puma? What do you think, CS? Uh, maybe. I I don't think that getting a Puma instead of the Lukes would be the right choice in this situation. Unless he's worried about DevM pulling out like an M15 and or a quad. Yeah, it's quite a tough choice. I mean, even given the squad wipe that Paul's inflicted on uh, Mr. DevM, it doesn't look like he's using his advantage quite wisely. I think the Lukes would have definitely been the good call, even considering, you know, DevM going Captain Stewart, because your Volks can't fight off these guys right now that DevM has on the field. No, definitely not. The JLI will help them um, scale into the mid and late game, but definitely not like a Lukes running around, chasing things down, wiping right. squads, countering the M20. Honestly, I feel like the Lux is a better counter to the M20 than even a Puma. Because at least if like the Bazooka guy hops out of the M20 and tries to shoot you, the Lux can make pretty quick work of it. Whereas the Puma, oh, he he is opting for the Lux. It's just going to be a little okay. bit later than it was it a bit delayed. Been. Yeah, I don't know. Even that in itself seems like a bit of a misplay. What did he? I wasn't looking exactly, but what did he pop the Jaegers to accomplish? Just to protect you his fuel. Yeah, I think you wanted to force the lieutenant squad out of his that part of the map. Okay. I did give time for DevM to get up to 60 fuel though, so he's going to have the option of calling in a captain right when he sees the Lukes hit the field. Yeah, he does need a bit of manpower because he did elect to pop out the ambulance, which is good. Uh, the captain is going to be a bit delayed though now, and the Lukes is going to cause mass retreats here. Did, did he lay an M20 mine just now? Is that what the M20 was doing here? Doesn't seem like uh, it. Oh, he's actually he tech nades! Oh, and the M20 eats a Shrek. The Luke is chasing it down. 
Is Paul really gonna chase down here? Is he not gonna respect an M20 mine? He's Looks going like for it. M20 does go down. Yeah, see, here's what I was saying. If the Bazooka crew gets out, the loose can just kite it and kill it, whereas the Puma would be kind of screwed a little bit. Stern piles go down at the mid, I believe. Okay. No. That was Looks just. Looks like they're going to live. Really lucky, yeah. That yeah, looked that's like a sure. RNG fire. God blessing fire. right there. Despite all of this, DevM still has his fuel and is decapping the VP up in the top. So he'll probably be able to even harass Paul's fuel right after that if he's quick enough about it. Yeah, he just needs to focus on not bleeding too much, I think. Um, he is queuing up his captain now, but he won't have quite enough resources for the steward unless he trades very efficiently here. Does he get the 18 8 off? Oh, the Kubel does go down. A good pickup there for Dev M as the captain hits the field. Rear Shalom moving to decap the fuel. Uh, JLI sprinting to cover in the garrison. And the Lukes plus the JLI, I don't even think that man will be, have time to get the decap on the fuel. He is keeping the VP pressure on Paul, though. He has that mid-VP about halfway up, so he'll be putting Paul in the triple cap once again. Maria Echelon being forced away here by the Lukes. Might even see a wipe if Paul chooses to chase all the way to base, although I'm not sure he can spare the time to chase all the way considering the battles going on across the map. Yeah, the captain's like there to cover chase, the retreat. Though. Uh -huh. The captain's kind of going the opposite side of the building as he needs to be going, though. Yeah, he's taking a bit too long. But yeah, the Paul okay. needs to get the Luke's, Luke's into the middle of the map so he can rest control of that area. Again, there's a 50 cal in that house kind of denying that entire, oh, yeah. entire area from Paul. Paul actually putting up his battle group right now. So I was wondering, I was like looking down at his resources, I'm like, he's kind of low on manpower for what he has in the field, but he's putting right. up his battle group to get that healing in. Very nice. I think Dev M probably also wanted the early ambulance because you don't want to be fighting Jaeger Light Infantry with lower health squads as they're oh, just going to yeah. get sniped, be sniped down even left more. And right. LT moving in to win this engagement, getting in on the flank of the Volks Grenadiers for full damage there. M20 crew does find the Lukes. 50 yeah, they're pretty low doing health though already. There. He probably needs to retreat that bazooka crew. Uh, he just wanted one more shot. That was a little bit risky though. I feel like he could have gotten yeah. away. The squad spacing was in his favor there it seemed like. Devm yeah, does get into the garrison here in the south just right before Paul does. Will we see a nade being thrown in... Yes, a nade... Oh, scavenge nade actually gets thrown. Forces a retreat on the rifleman. LT just backpedals here. Rear Echelon goes down at the Munis at the top to the Stern Pioneers. Devin was not Those paying Stern attention Stern Pioneers there. have been monsters. That two, 14 kills. Now there's a oh, rifle yeah. squad running right into him. It's going to win that Luke's fight. Luke finds but... the captain. And really cheeky um, kiting behind this hedge here. Very nice micro there from Paul to get some damage on the captain while also not taking any damage himself. And he's decapping... The VP down there. He still hasn't gotten control of the middle of the map. However, his map control has still been consistently good this whole game. Yeah, and speaking of which, a Stewart hits the field now and is moving to counteract the JLI at the south, avoiding the Shreks entirely, which is quite smart of Dev M. The captain has quite a bit too much to handle here with three Volk squads surrounding him, although support is on the way. Uh, we'll see what Paul does with his Lukes. He elects to go to the left now that he sees the Stewart. Which is a good decision by him by him there. Wonder what DevM's next unit is. Do you think we'll be seeing an M1? From DevM? Yeah, M1 AT gun or Oh uh, what do you uh, think? I would infantry? like to. Well so the Stuart's already out to counter the Lukes. Um and the captain and the bazooka squad from the M20. I don't right. know that he necessarily needs to invest in an AT gun right now, just when he's facing down on Lukes. He already has three things that can keep it away if he starts floating manpower maybe a pack howie to help in this garrison and help kind of into the mid and yeah. late game having an indirect fire option to you know these jli are going to be want to wanting to hug buildings and and indirect fire just to soften your opponent's positions can be very useful yeah definitely i would i would like to see a pack howie here on this map it considering how um small the map is 
The Pakawi, once it vets up, same with the ISG, it can reach quite far. Lukes does force a rifleman up up in the north. Uh, Paul's doing a good job of avoiding the steward with his uh, Lukes. We may see a trap being set up by DevM soon with a steward. Now DevM is gonna need uh, an AT gun. Look at what unit Paul just brought oh. into the field. We got the Pro Wind. Yep. So now, now that uh, M1 would be an extremely nice investment. Doesn't have quite the, the, quite the bit of manpower for it though. Yeah, uh, he's getting there because the Ostwind is just gonna kind of laugh at the M20 squad and even the captain a little bit. Oh yeah. They're both of his vehicles are going in really hard in the Stewart. Is there anything around to support it? We have a rifle we have a squad rifleman and the captain it. is moving to react, but he's very far away. He needs to activate the stun round on his. He he pops in armor company in anticipation of. Uh, he needs just one more fuel for the uh, M10. M10 is about to hit the field. This is actually going to be a gets really bad in. turnaround for Paul. The M10's probably going to take out both of these vehicles. Oh, Captain comes in on the flank of the Lukes. The Stewart goes down. M10 is starting the chase. Yeah, the M10 Shrek's is so quick. Support. Lukes does get taken out. Oh, no, it actually misses. And the, and the M10 gets taken down to less than half health. Rifleman coming here for the AT nades. M10 misses again. Luke's does go down. The M10 has that awesome in his sights, and both, both of those get Volk pinned. are pinned. M10 has free Maybe reign to chase it. Another miss. Devon was Shrek not here. popping. Shrek gets lined oh, up. this M10. Oh my goodness. Devon misplayed very hard. He did not use hold fire on his on his M10 until the very last. Um, after the very last shot he took, um, it cost him. Possibly the Oswin pickup there, unfortunately. Even outside of RNG, a misplay like that um, can cost you quite a bit if that Oswin starts wiping squads in, in a few minutes. Ambulance is being rebuilt for DevM here. M10 was a clutch, clutch call in there. It could have been disaster for DevM if he hadn't had that unit available. Correct me if I'm wrong, but DevM also didn't throw in any anti tank rifle nades from his rifles. I feel like he could have snared both. The Ostwind and the Lukes at one point. And look at this point. combination of the Stern Pioneer Mech Regiment repairs. The Ostwind is already fully operational and heading back to the front line. And yeah, he he missed on the rifle nade. Maybe it seemed like he res he trusted on his M10 and bazookas to do all the damage and maybe not waste munitions. But it obviously hindsight is 2020, and we're seeing a re-engagement here at Devem's fuel. Loses his M20 squad. Yeah, that's pretty big because that yeah. um that had that. Lose, did he lose another squad somewhere else? I thought I just saw his squads get lower again. But yeah, I mean, he loses that extra bazooka. So he's down to two bazookas and just the M10. Yeah, that was just a rear echelon he lost earlier. That's why it looks a bit thin. But other than that recent loss of the bazook crew, he's still still in there. Oswin's rotating to the lieutenant on the fuel. Shreks do keep the M10 at bay. RNG, RNG uh, artillery gets called in at the mid house. He oh, could wipe that was, retreating Volk. I don't retreats. know if your Volk got out of there. One uh, shot will get okay, you. He got out of get time. Out of okay. That thing is very, very. Um, yeah, the scatter could be pretty ridiculous. As we all know. I thought it might even scatter into the retreating. But this Austin is just like on a rampage. Already that one pushing the LT out of here. The captain pops into the house. They're gonna get two nice hits on it. Yeah, this is the problem with those misplays can cost you squads down the line. Um, Wow, Captain does a great job of forcing that Oswind away. M10 crew pops out to Captain VP here. Fresh Rifleman and 50 cal moving to the mid under cover of that artillery. Last last few barrages coming in. Alright, so Paul's back up to nearly... Or he's back up to 100 fuel. I was going to say nearly 100 fuel. He is up to over 100 fuel. I think he's going to answer the question I was going to ask you. I was going to say, are we going to see him put up his tier 4 or yeah. stop for a second Oswin? But he did call in a new SWS truck. Ooh, he's probably going to put his tier 4. Look from Paul. Maybe punished by this 50 cal. Nah, he has a nice little arch set up there. We'll be forced to retreat. Nice kiting there from the M10. Forces the Shreks into the arc of the 50 cal. We'll be suppressed here because they aren't in cover just yet. Well, at least one of them aren't. Both forced to retreat by one HMG, just proving the point that you need to avoid tactical control grouping as much as possible when you know your opponent has HMGs. So good play there by DevM. M10's going in really hard on that Austin when I don't know if that's a good call. Attack I mean, grounding through the hedge. Very nice. 
He knows all the Shreks just retreated though, so the Aswin is heavily supported. Paul was looking to put up his tier 4, it's a good thing that he was a little bit patient on that or else the M10 and the LT would have found it and that definitely would not have lived. M10 just said good effect on target, no idea what that meant because I don't think Paul lost anything there. Maybe uh, wire, I think he ran over well. wire actually, never mind. He ran over wire in the Q, the kill dialogue. Never mind. This this triple cap that uh oh this M10 that M10 stuck. Is maintained. Paul's oh, on yeah, under 200 Paul. VPs. Yeah, very low. This LT's kind of clumped up here. Takes a very, very chunky first hit. <laughs> Meaty. Here we go, Captain reacting. Oh, a 50 cal. I don't know if that 50 uh -oh. cal in the house is That's a good idea with all destroyed. those volts right there. He queues up another batch of nades here. May just lose a 50 cal. That will be a huge blow. 50 cal needs to get out of there. It's stuck. It's not retreating. Captain as well. M10 is not just yet repaired. Will we see a bulldozer from Dev M here or another M10? I would think he's just going to opt for another M10 or even Major Tech. Um, the bulldozer seems a little bit underwhelming these days against good players because it's pretty easy to just micro out of the shots. Oh, this M10 is going really hard again on the Ostwind. It's a little bit out of position. The, the Shreks aren't near to no support Shreks. though. It is blitzing. Nice play here by Paul, luring him into the Shreks. That's perfect. Yeah, blitzing back to his own Shrek. M10 might actually go down. Shrek's coming in from the north and uh -oh. Shrek's coming in from the south. But he would probably be happy with a trade. Yeah, if he could trade, I would say it's Paul's That's some cheeky micro from Paul. Oh, may I'll lose really... the M10 because of this. Oh, gets the last shot off. the Austin. Oh my, what a pickup. And he gets away with the M10 for a second there. It looked like that ISG was going to get the killing blow on the M10, but the arc of it looked really um, on point, but obviously it didn't, so never mind. Could have got a nice little stroke of RNG luck there from Mr. Paul. He is salvaging his Oswin Wreck as his Tier 4 gets set up. Um, I think that was a little I bit believe, of a misplay Yeah, Dev M does queue up Major. Yeah, I think probably his Austin would have lived if he had just retreated backwards behind to Schwerer HQ, right? I don't think the M10 would have been able to get the last hit until the Austin started shooting it and revealed itself. Yeah, uh, Paul kind of, he micro there at the beginning very well to juke the M10, but sort of misstepped when he peeked out again above the hedge and he took the killing blow. Very costly mistake there. And this 50 cal has just been a nightmare for Paul to try and deal with. Yeah, every time he like tries there's to... a second one on the field. Yeah, every time he tries to move his folks somewhere, you just see a 50 cal gunning him down. M10 does hit vet too, so now it's much more agile. I believe that's the bonuses. Better vehicle limits, flanking speed, better turret traverse, and increased moving accuracy. So quite the buff at vet two for the M10. Yeah, probably gonna eliminate um, the Panzer IV as an option for Paul in this game. I don't know why you'd really go for a P4 against a Vet 2 M10, or even just the opponent having M10s in general. Yeah, I wonder if maybe teching Major. I don't think he spotted the tier structure till just now, but if he had earlier, maybe he could have gotten two M10s and waited for his Howitzer Barrage and just knock out the tier 4 and practically seal the game here. But, he's only 30 munitions from the Howie, and he's getting yeah. 52 a minute, so he might just whittle it down a little bit with the M10, and then just try to drop the RNG bombs on it and pray. Yeah, the Shrek That'd boards are on the way. Blow. That would practically mean the game, I would think, if he lost his tier 4 at this stage. You can't oh, spam Oswins against cheap M10s, but the Sturmpires are quick to get there to repair. Um, no Raken! Okay, Raken is being queued up now. I was thinking... He, the Shreks aren't enough against something as agile as an M10, especially considering it can crush your squads. Um, yeah, you get one volley off and then you just die. Yeah, exactly. Um, Major is revealed. Paul knows what's in store in the next few minutes. Um, good pick here from him building that Raketan. The Raketan uh, is really good at reacting to these uh, vehicles, considering you can bait your opponent just like devm has been doing this game. Wondering what Paul is going to do to turn this game around. Like you said, I don't know if P4 is the right choice, but the wait to Panther is about five minutes, and he can't wait that long considering his VP choice, his VP situation. Yeah, 
He is already really low on VPs. He is about to pick up a triple cat, but he's definitely gonna lose at least one of those. Nasty grenade, yeah. almost. Um, almost nasty grenade, and then JLI down on the side. JLI, south. yeah. Easily could have lost that squad if he hadn't reacted properly. Good usage by the major there by DevM, not keeping it in base. We see some people tend to suicide it, but DevM's using it proactively to harass. Very nice to see that. Bars online for Mr. DevM, even though he only has two riflemen. But still, good usage of his munition. Doesn't elect to save for the howitzer barrage on the tier 4 structure. I guess he's confident enough in his capabilities. Ostwin Actually goes gets for another in. Ostwin. Wow. I don't he's know if desperate. I like he's that. He's desperate. That's a yeah. desperate call-in right there. He's, his manpower situation is getting dire. His squads aren't fully reinforced. He doesn't have enough manpower to fully reinforce. So he just calls in the Ostwin and hopes to turn things around here. Yeah, it's also down to basically 100 VPs. It's gonna be triple capped again in just a second, although he probably is again, pushes out of a mid. He's gonna be in a lot of trouble though. Actually, what did DevM just spend his fuel on? Yep, that's gonna see. He's gonna be in trouble. M4 uh, Sherman. M4 Sherman yeah, gets good here. choice. Oh, this M10 just gonna chase down the Austin. It's two more hits and it's gonna be dead. Nothing and it does really have its own flanking speed, it. otherwise known as US Blitz. Wow, RNG actually grants him with... Okay, sorry, I thought that was engine damage. Never mind. Yeah, it was just the main gun, so... Nice little horde of infantry here from Paul, electing to focus on the central part of the map. We'll, we'll grab it from DevM, although the flanks are secured by the 50 cal and other squads of infantry. DevM is... is running into that Vet 350 cal again. Yeah. It's from the story Forcing of this game, it seems left like. and right. I see um, already going into DevM's base. So oh, right on top. Okay, DevM's good it. reaction there, although it might not be fast enough to save that. Okay, misjudged yeah, the timing, but almost hits the ambulance. Just barely oh. misses the ambulance there. Barely misses the captain, too, actually. It was kind of a big waste of munition. I don't even think he got a single kill out of that. Now the Aids M4 Sherman is here. The mid might wipe it here. Just barely. Thankfully, the JLI were suppressed. Oh, the JL sniped it? The snipe oh. went off. So yeah, clearing out that vet is very, very huge for Paul. He's getting back to where he's not on the bleed anymore. He's going to have to send something to deal with the 50 cal on the north house. He probably doesn't know it's up there yet, unless he's been clicking into the fog. Sherman about to reveal itself to the Ostwin. Yeah, he gets really nasty hit on that frontal armor, and Paul's having to pull back. The rack is here, though, so I don't think DevM will be able to chase. And double Shreks, almost like a Yeah, the track. rack's actually gotten quite a good few hits on the M10, which has been forced to repair now. Shreks are chasing this down. 50 Cal is coming to react. Be able to go to oh, base. just barely. Oh, I think both Shrek shots missed. Wow. Bad stroke of RNG there for Paul. A little bit of a misplay there by DevM, choosing not to kite all the way back. Almost costs, costs him his Sherman. Buys him a lot of time, though, which is good. Buys Paul a lot of time, I mean, to keep this two VPs cap. It gives the Ostwin room to come down here. Now, another JLI squad called in for Paul. I was hoping he was going to go for Obers or something. Look at this composition. 77 pop cap worth of three JLI, three Volks, Pioneer, Raketten, Infantry support gun and Oswin is quite quite powerful, although I don't I'm not quite a bit of a fan of his uh, reaction to the 50 cals. Um, he does have mechanized regiment up if he chose to wait another minute or so. Considering he did win the engagement in the south, there was no need to pop that extra JLI. Maybe he could have gotten a Stuka Zufus and dealt with the 50 cals, especially considering the one in the north is in a garrison. M10 I'm saying going this. so M10 hard on the Ostwin. Ostwin getting stuck. Grenade wipes out JLI in the bottom as well. Wipes the no JLI. Support. Oswin just barely gets out of the firing arc there of the M10. As it hits Vet 3, M10 almost goes down. Takes another Shrek hit. Needs to get out of there. I can't believe Paul saved the Ostwin there. That was very uh, well microed by him. Look how fast uh, this M10 is now, oh my goodness. <laughs> Speed it everyone, it's a, a crushing beast. nightmare. Oh, Paul JLI and Pipit are JLI so squad. low. They were like laying in the red cover and got naded as well. This nade usage from DevM is very strong. Oh, nades from Kinsey Paul Kel too, he took that rifle squad to almost yeah, no help. Yeah, this has got five men, just needs a nice little retreat there and no manpower. Oh, so over Ketten goes down. Cal is pinning that rack, just destroying it. It's a really a huge pickup for that, man. 
Yeah, that was Good. huge. Although he's not repairing his tanks right now, they're just chilling there. Okay, now he hops out. I think giving that Raketan away was the end of the game. Um, yeah, the M10s have nothing to fear now, especially at Vet 3, it being so fast, you can just run at the, the Shred guys. Just another squad in here pinned down by oh, that Jesus 50 surrender. Cow. Very good usage of the USF faction there by DevM, considering his very, very rocky start, losing a rifle squad in the first minute to Stern Pioneer Kubel combo. Um, the ultimate combo nowadays for OKW's early game. Uh, just didn't have a good answer for the 50 cal HMGs. One of them got to Vet 3, got decrewed, and still managed to get almost Vet 2, at least for the both of them. And that that moment there when Paul was heading to the base with his Lukes, Ost, Lukes and Ostwin, um, if that M10 wasn't available, that would have been the game, CS. Would, would you yeah. agree with that? Oh, uh, absolutely. Every, everything would have been dead, right? Maybe he could kill the Lukes with some AT grenades, but other than that, yeah, like his... Yeah, all of his rifles would have been dead or just running in circles for an hour while Paul caps up the whole map. Yeah, that was quite the critical situation. All right, so we're going to hop into the next game. I'm assuming they've already started. We don't want to miss anything there, so give us a few moments, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll be back in a moment. You know what we need to do, though, Momo? How many free squads did DevM get that game? Well, if you count Vilka Cruz, he had like 10 free squads, man. That's, <laughs> That's what he won, right? The free squads. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us there for that short break. I'm sure you guys were entertained with that last game. We are now heading into game two of the NA finals between Paul AD, also known as Paula, versus Dev M, who just took game one of uh, the Famineville matchup playing as the U.S. forces. Now we see Paul as the British forces rising up in popularity now with the AEC giving, having been given a recent buff. Um, I'm sure there's quite a few players here who know Paul's distinct builds with the Brit faction recently. So I'm hoping we'll see a nice matchup here with DevM. I'm sure he's studied his opponent and knows what he's up against. Uh, what's your what's your analysis on this, CS? Um, so first off, I really like that DevM is kind of going back to his roots. Uh, I've seen him scrimming a lot recently, and I think he was wanting to try and explore some other factions, but I do believe his real strength lies with USF and Austere. Uh, definitely has always had the most success with them from what I've seen, so it's nice to see him playing those factions in the tournament. I do worry that his Austere might have some... The matchup is a little bit in favor of the Brits right now because of the newfound strength of the AEC. Austere really lacks a solid counter to it until they get a tank out. And by that yeah. time, it can be easy to lose map control. And uh, we know Paul loves the AEC, as I think probably every Brit player these days does. Oh yeah, Paul's also known for his uh, liberal usage of trenches. Uh, the trenches are actually quite powerful, as we've come to know. They provide green cover practically anywhere, and they're very, very hard to kill, even with AT guns. And also, CS, make sure to remind me that whenever a vehicle hits the field, that we take a good long minute at the, de the decals. So <laughs> the decals we, can, we can understand the importance behind why the player chose the specific decal that they, cho that, you know, they chose. Because it says a lot of things about the game, and it's very important for people uh, aspiring to get good at this game to know your decals. So remind me on that one. Um, and I'm excited for this game. Will do. And as you were saying, um, the liberal use of trenches, Paul already putting up a trench on his fuel. I like the trenches more against OKW than Austere. Um, Austere getting the snipers and the MG. A lot of times an MG can just sit out of your range uh, and just shoot you in the trench anyway and kind of get some free veterancy from killing the trench and your dudes at the same time. Yeah, um, either way, I wouldn't say it's a bad investment, even though you are right. I'd say it's definitely stronger against OKW, especially considering the situation with their flamers not being being locked uh, doctrinally. Pioneer do secure the fuel house here in the north. Oh, DevM's MG gets down in the south, though. It's going to be bad news for that infantry section. Although I think it's going to get around the hedgerow and out of line of sight before the MG can set up. Very nice play there by... Paul, he does ghost wire or ghost sandbag the exit there. Actually, there's only one door. Excuse me. It's sort of to mess with the retreat path. Although I don't think it'll affect this MG while this engagement is going up in the north. 
obviously in the favor of Brit's infantry section. And Debem already getting the cap off on Paul's fuel. He's going to be trying to delay that AEC as much as possible. And these, these infantry sections are just running circles around the MG with Oh yeah, this they're captain. playing mind games with each other here. Devon unpacks and gets back in the garrison in anticipation of Devon. Or excuse me, I reversed the names there. But these guys are playing at a very high level. And any sort of mistake early game can cost you quite a bit considering how powerful the AEC is now and Devam is doing a good job of delaying it he has decapped a few as you said a sniper is coming out Paul I believe has already teched up we are awaiting the research of the AEC although I don't think he can afford to do it just yet considering his fuel situation he may elect for one or two sappers maybe in a vi maybe even a Vickers HMG before electing to go for the AEC we'll see how he reacts to the sniper that's about to reveal itself he cancels the trench what is this sniper doing? Oh my. Okay, that was a horrible misplay by Devon. Yeah. Literally walks up to an infantry section, forced to retreat. Will cost him this fuel here. That is actually really big, guys. He just gave away the fuel. He's not going to be able to delay the AC as much as he wanted to or could have. Um, yeah, that's a huge blow. The, the sniper's not done anything yet, and it's already revealed itself. Yeah, and um, Paul actually has a trench on Devem's cutoff, so Devem went to try and pick up Paul's fuel, and in the end, he only ended up losing his own, and then this cutoff. And Paul, before the AEC comes, you see actually what unit he's building? Yeah, he's building a sniper. So we're going to see some nice sniper wars here. Um, very nice sniper matchup in the sense that both snipers are like equally strong against each other because they both right. just... There's no two men, there's no difference really in aim times and stuff like that. So yeah. whoever makes the misplay is going to end up losing their sniper and losing a huge investment. Yeah, very different from the Soviet Austria sniper showdown as we've seen from Paul and Lovnest uh, earlier this month in the NA uh, matchup. I believe it was the finals two or three weeks ago and the Soviet sniper really struggles. But as you said, the Soviet, or excuse me, the Brit and the Austria sniper are much more on par with each other. Devem does make a nice cutoff here and um, denies fuel, munitions, and a territory point from Paul, and he makes a third Grenadier and does not elect for teching just yet. He is researching his battle phase. Oh, He's very Paul's confident. Paul's going to be in range of Dev M's. Oh, Paul, my. Dev -M's oh the Brit Sniper chooses to... S wow, that he was a huge bullet He's still in range of the Dev Sniper, isn't he? Enemy causing trouble. No, they okay, both disengage so and pull, pop on hold fire. Wow, that could have been... so ballsy of Paul. He yeah, didn't even get a kill was... from it, did he? That was even ballsy of DevM. You could argue, argue both ways. Um, yeah, but DevM, Devm obviously wasn't everything. expecting a sniper, and Paul wasn't really thinking straight. It seemed like at that stage he could have waited for the sniper. Wow, yeah, that was definitely just... Definitely could have waited for the counter snipe to be his very first shot. This infantry section is in a dire situation here. They're down to one man. May go down here to the sniper on the retreat path. There's also a grenadier and an MG that hasn't quite set up. Misses the, I think the killing sniper blow missed. there. So he probably should have like soft pedaled up around that hedgerow and then retreated. So he would go to get all that line of sight blocking for him. Yeah, I think he was a bit excited though. He's like, oh, squad wipe, squad wipe. You know, yeah. it doesn't. You know, I, I can definitely say a lot of people fall to that um, and lose their cool. Yeah. Well, it's hard to be that like analytical in such a situation where your squad is so low health and there's a sniper and so much in their treat path. You just want to do anything to get it out of there. And the AEC is <laughs> going to be hitting the field. It's ironically six minutes in is like a little bit slow for an AEC. It seems yeah, it's like. about a minute, minute and a half late. But it's understandable considering his fuel situation. But right now, he needs to use this AEC to pump out other AECs. Um, oh, the infantry section does hop in right in front of this. MG42 is going to take so much damage here. Now the MG is doing so much damage, I think, dude. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's Sorry, I worded it oh, wrong, oh, I that's the what I meant. take so much. Yeah, look at that. This is why Both I don't ways, like the, I would say, but yeah, more than MG42's that's favorite. That's definitely a win for the MG42, though. It hits Vet1 as well. And uh, Vet1 actually does really well against AEC, so I wonder if Paul's going to be expecting that. I, when yeah, we were especially playing the rear day, armor behind green cover. Yeah. When we were playing the other day, I lost an AEC to the MG42. I was like, oh, I can get around the corner and circle straight. Hit. Nope. Yeah, it's it's unexpected. Um, especially if you oh, don't respect it. the sniper is so close to the AEC, though. Pack is okay. being built by DevM. He's got... He's popped a flamer for his pioneers. I don't think he's 
planted any tellers. I'm, I don't. I haven't noticed any. Um, well, Devin doesn't have sweepers anyway, which is interesting. I think he wanted the sniper to try to get the counter snipe, so he invested the manpower in that rather than picking up a right. uh, swat of sappers with the the sweepers. And yeah, Devim's on well, has Paul triple capped again already. His VP control has just been insane. The sappers do come out. Um, one thing I've noticed myself as a player against Paul is he doesn't really build mines. Also, considering he is a fan of the uh, tactical support regiment that spawns the field recovery operation, Royal Engineers, and those engineers actually can't lay mines, so the only unit that can lay mines right now in Paul's composition is that one lone Royal Engineer. Um, and there are no demo charges outside of commandos. British Sniper does retreat here after taking a shot in fear of being counter sniped. Yeah, that sniper was pretty close to it, it looked like. If he had stuck around, he might have gotten counter snipe. So Paul does pick up tactical support. Um, he is almost to unlocking those field recovery engineers, which will give him a nice extra two squads to cap and sweep. So I know they have like their salvage kit. Does that count as a sweeper? Can anybody confirm that? I've, it looks like a they, sweeper. They spawn right? with sweepers out the bat. Okay, so they have their sweepers and they have their salvage, salvage kit. kit. Right. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, but they can't lay mines. And right. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if the five-man upgrade affects them. I, I think they might. I'm not sure. I'm sure someone can help us out on that. But as we see, Paul secured the south fuel here. Excuse me, north. Depends on the yeah, way you look says at it. Both fuel. So Paul's secured both fuels and is now picking oh. up one VP. And these snipers are getting dangerously close to each other again in the mid. But Paul's isn't on whole fire. I wonder what his uh, plan is here. They might in, reveal the, itself out of cover Paul's here. He's not in cover. Reveal? Oh, oh he goes he's never paying retreat. attention. Oh, his sniper was he not. Yeah, he was not looking at it. A nice reaction from Paul there. As soon as he realized he wasn't in cover, he's like, screw that, man. I'm out of here. And just yeah, takes the gamble, you know, 50-50 if his shot would have connected or not, if DevM was paying attention. So This MG in mid might go down. That'd be a huge one for Paul. Uh, he is going to get the trade-off. Although the AC might get there. In time. Although the pack is there. Barely out pack of was looking at the pack. AC like its turret was looking at it, but it didn't yeah. actually fire. That was out of the arc, I guess. Devon fires a rifle nade a bit off on the trench. I guess he was aiming for the exit, but it was still off considering that was his his goal in mind. Second AEC out for Paul. Grenadiers might get wiped here by the AEC if he doesn't retreat. Yeah, one good AEC shot. It goes down to one man, but he he's going to get out of there. Pack moved over to support it, but Devon just going to... Or Paul's just going to skirt around the house. I don't like this. I wonder Devin if Devon will Paul's go fuel, for mobile but... defense. I think that'd be a pretty good call, especially once he sees the second AC Ooh, show sniper up. Michael down AC going on the sniper! Second, second AC chasing all the way to base, catches the pack out of position. The Actually, pack both are is going to be deep through here. This pioneer needs to get out of there as well, unless he wants to get wiped. One Very AC is going to Fausted, but it's kind of like an exercise it's in It's too utility, late, he's right? going to blow up the pack. Or oh, even wait, elect MG's to wipe here. His... But he doesn't have Muni, does he? He doesn't have no, Muni for cooldown. the... He can pop uh, it. He can pop. He's popping it now. He's on the rear armor of this AEC, although he's about to get out of the arc. Look at uh, that damage, guys. Rig. Takes down an AEC. May even... Okay, this one's frontal armor. Does elect to take the pack. Oh, no. The, it's turning the rear the armor. Pathing, the pathing the screws over the other armor. AC. It's Sidney Rods. Take out two AECs. When have you seen and that And the pack. It gets in the pack back. It gets the pack. What? That's the that's the play of the game right there for sure. That is a hero MG already vet three. How does that? And he gets counter sniped. It looks like he got counter sniped. Look at this! Oh my god! What a turnaround there from Devan. Picks up two AECs with your MG, recovers your own pack, and gets the <laughs> counter snipe. He got the counter snipe, decrews the pack, kills two AECs with phosphorus rounds. MG forty two is up to vet three. Paul's just gotten out his third AC, but he's only down to one, and Devem doesn't really have to go with uh, mobile oh, defense yeah. anymore. He's, he's I think you should go up. for a Tiger at this point. Go tier 3, grab a Tiger, in my opinion. How does so, that oh, even this AC, happen, Paul's man? Mad. This AC, his third AC is just going in. This AC is just diving into the base. He's about to eat a Faust. Yeah. Paul is throwing this game. And this other Gren's about to cue the... Oh, what? If the one cues the Faust canceled. and the other, yeah, he wanted that one to get the Faust, the other one can grab oh, the package. Oh, I see, and he, re he... 
Yeah, oh. he has to reach that pack. I think he it, gets uh, vision Pulp of this. To get out of there. Oh, okay, Pulp pop smoke, so he'll he get out of there. Pop smoke. He needs to. He needs to calm oh, down. That, that was a. a oh, he calls in the Puma to finish off the AC. Yeah, and he still has line of sight on it because it just shot, and he has no AT gun. Paul has no AT. Are there any mines? No mines from Paul. He no calls in the 150 Muni airdrop, gets the AT gun from it, but there's no Vickers. Relic 8 is Vickers. Oh my goodness, this AC is bone. Especially considering Unless, the AC missed. If it can missed. hit, and then the six pounder hits. Oh, it misses! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How does that? Oh man. Oh. <laughs> DevM has to be feel pretty bad about that because he just teched to battle phase two to put up his T3, but then he blew all of his fuel on a Puma. <laughs> so like he's so far away from a P4 now, actually. And Paul just getting another AEC, which I guess might be the right choice after you kill a Puma. Wow. <laughs> actually, look at this MG42. It's firing on the trench here. <laughs> the fuel. <laughs> I guess that's yeah. one way to. Oh, I mean, you might as well. Wow. It's not shooting at other squads, right? You might as well clear you, it you're out. You're so right. That sucks so bad, man. He calls in the Puma as he texts the Battle Phase 2. And now he's that much fuel behind on a Panzer IV. Yeah. Hopefully, Paul will plant some mines after that, seeing that DevM is willing just to rush in there with the vehicle to try to give him the knockout blow. But look at... That's very unfortunate, though. If you look around, the airdrop... It didn't work properly. It didn't give him his Vickers. That sucks. Yeah, yeah I uh, think... Bible um, thump for Paul there, guys. He, he got robbed. He didn't get his ability all the way. But he did make a good situation out of it by picking up that Puma. So good for him there. Good. Uh, yeah, I bet DevM didn't even expect that. I kind of didn't even notice that Paul had airdropped anything. So I bet DevM was like, hey, I haven't seen a six-pounder at all. I've right. only seen AECs and infantry sections. I can probably just get this Puma in there, kill the third AEC, and then, like, what's Paul going to do? Check another AEC after there's already a Puma and a pack on the field? Yeah, I don't know. He actually elects to spawn another Puma. Another Puma? He's tunnel vision himself into that as well. Yeah, that seems like a little bit of a bad call against the six pounder. It's like two AECs and a six pounder versus a Puma. I'm not so sure that that fight goes well for the Puma. This, uh, right? Gren's are oh, look really at this. low. Is about two to get AECs destroyed. in the retreat pack. Although this one's on hold the fire. Puma's coming in. AEC's turret is derping out. It's gonna eat another pack shot. Puma's gonna finish it off here. Oh, he pops oh, a pops smoke and smoke. hits and misses. Oh, both AECs are gonna going go through around one to smoke. finish off the Puma. No, he elects to get out of there. Good. Decision yeah, there. Very, very good call. By Paul, Paul. although he might he lose his infantry, infantry section, section somewhere. He yeah, another he's about one to lose it now. Incendiary. Oh, Did that my. Incendiary round? Wait, he's not popping it. Yeah, he's not popping ah. it. Oh, like he chooses to use play. the normal round. He could have picked up two infantry sections there. Wait, Siez, you forgot to remind me to zoom in on the decals. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I was way too excited about, like, we're going to review your membership and remember the noobs uh, <laughs> later this week for this betrayal. Um, but back to the fair. casting. Good pick up there by DevM. Wipes an infantry section. Paul actually calls in his recovery engineers. Yeah, um, he wants those repairs. Get his ACs. He really needs the capping power, too. He was down to two capping squads. And now he, I guess he can use his engineers everywhere to cap. So yes, you had one job, man. I know, I know. We could look at that decal though. Is on next to <laughs> it's beautiful. Decal on the Puma. Shout out to whoever made that decal. Paul. God bless you. <laughs> the decal's Paul using. Does he have no decal on? It looks like. Yeah, I oh, guess not. I'm not too worried about. It. Kind of a lull in the game. I think. Uh, personally, I would say that DevM has an advantage right now. He has a Vet 2 sniper. He has an extremely strong infantry backbone. He has double flamer because Paul hasn't been planting mines. DevM doesn't have to respect the mines. And flamers are so good against Brits, whose squads always have to be in cover. And you just run your flamer up there and do massive damage to the infantry sections. Wait, did the AC just wipe something? Mm, I don't think so. Puma coming in on both of these AECs. Lays one nice shot in. Is Paul dropping um, another, more? Uh, another resupply AT gun operation? Vicker for him? Well, the, tr well, the 
Oh, he does get everything out of the drop, so seems good there for that one. Oh, I looked like the tree was going to eat his Vickers again, but fortunately it doesn't. Uh, will this HMG pop that hero incendiary round? He does! ACs are pulling out. He's having flashbacks to losing those two <laughs> ACs. So he does pull out, fortunately. Um, man, that was insane. Oh. That's highlight reel for sure. Dude, there's a cheeky teller that oh, I just planted a teller that. over near Pulse. Very fuel. nice. Yeah, it's very smart. I mean, Paul does have three sweepers, but it's likely an AC might just run through there. Could you imagine if both ACs clumped up and just ran through there at the same time? Yeah, especially when Paul tends to clump up into his tactical control groups, he may suffer a devastating blow with that teller mine. Losing one seems like the minimum, although he has been granted two free extra sweepers. Well, not free, but two extra sweepers from the Colin. But uh, yeah, even with ATMs this too. map control from DevM, You'd think Paul's VP control would be much worse. Uh, I would, I was in tack map for a little bit. I was like, okay, Paul's definitely at 100 or so, but he's at 250. It's, it's, it could be worse. In the VP section. Yeah, definitely. I mean, now he it's actually, gonna get real. He has enough fuel. He could take up to tier three if he wants, which I hope he opts for. I think he has to know that eventually you have to get rid of your ACs and tech up for a better unit. Yeah, um, I would like to see teching up there for um, Paul. And as we're saying this, Devem is actually going to Battle Phase 3. We may see oh, so, a Panther. Yeah, Panthers are extremely good against the Brits. The Six Pounder is good against Panthers, but the rest of their tanks really just aren't amazing. Just it takes Fireflies. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll see a Werfer. That's probably going to be a better bet. If you already have two AT guns and a Puma, Grab a Werfer to kill the Vickers, to kill the He could, um, six but as you've shown us, yes, yeah, you yourself, you've killed the, you've killed Werfers with just one single dive in AC, and that would be quite the good trade. Just one AC for a Werfer. Yeah, maybe. Devem could just put some mines, though. Like, that's what he probably he needs could. to do. Put a couple mines. As he swept the Teller, he's spotting it, but it's kind of hard to see. It's very well camouflaged into the ground there. Yeah, unless he's maybe paying attention to the in-game notification. Cap. Like the in-game says mine discovered or whatever, if he's paying attention right, to that. Right, right. Well, if you spam spacebar into the next uh, last event, you will spot it. But that's if Paul was paying attention. Hopefully the auto-sweep will happen once he caps his fuel for his sake. AC this is reversing into combat damage. here, is on hold fire. Runs into the Puma, rear armor. AT guns are out of position. This AC is going to go down. Pop smoke. Pop smoke. Hits. Oh, he, Devin wasn't on hold fire, so he shot at the infantry section instead. New Other AC going in on the Puma. Misses though, and the packs are moving into the position. I don't think that Paul's second AC wants to be doing this. Oh, he picks up the Puma, but he trades the AC instead. It's a good one for one trade, but Paul can't be losing the unit in his situation right now. Um, Teller Mine has not been swept, has been re hidden. Another sniper coming out for Dev M. Um, yeah, Paul, Paul hasn't, hasn't teched. Has he? he hasn't even put in the command vehicle yet. I would think he would activate it on if he didn't lose his other AC. May have. Um, oh my gosh! Not even. I'm not supposed to spoil, man. <sighs> All that hype, man, and you just come in and do that. My God. Another. Alright, having ignored that, another AC is coming out for Paul. Wait, his AT gun is just running in here. There's three squads. Not really sure what Paul's doing right there with the AT gun. Maybe he just feels like he needs the capping. They're just getting shredded though. Four squads now in line to shoot at it. Yeah, and he's actually he's... very far from um, from the artillery cover. Yeah, his AT gun just falls. Rifle they going in on this Vickers too. Deals a ton of damage, but no model kills. It's the sniper coming up for DevM. Devm looks like he's just gonna steal that six pounder and probably get out of there with it. I'll yeah, play up wow. a mortar pit in a really interesting spot. Uh, mortar pit, maybe. Yeah, I guess he has no other way to deal with the AT wall, and he was unsuccessful in his um, unsuccessful in his counter snipe attempt while that whole um, crazy chaotic situation was going down in the south by Devm's base with the incendiary rounds on the MG taking out two AEC, so it's understandable losing your sniper in that situation considering you were really focused on getting your vehicle out there. But having said that, you know, 
The snipers are still giving him quite a bit of trouble. This one has 24 kills. The fresh one has not yet fired a shot. I feel like uh, Paul could have invested in another sniper, perhaps, because if you keep it hidden and like the very first shot that you throw out there, if that's the counter snipe, it's a really, really big win, because then you are at a big advantage in the sniper war. Debem does put up his right. tier four. That MG is so low. That three MG in the house is extremely low. That mortar yeah, he is needs barraging. to get out of there now. Okay, he's getting out now. Another thing to be re oh, like right there, man. when they clump up when they get out as the shells come down, it can cost you your squad, but fortunately he gets away with one guy. And the house goes down the very, very next set of shots. And Paul two does actually rotating to the south. Vehicle. He's putting two mortar pits up, even though he has 260 fuel. I'm, I don't know that I can agree yeah, with this This play. game's kind of been ruined for me. It already got spoiled in chat. It's kind of, it was really epic, I mean. I wasn't Another I wasn't calling the game guys. at all. Yeah. The sniper's that really sucks, man. Devin is laying S mines at the VPs, maintaining his good VP control, cementing it with the S mines. Vickers does make its appearance here, pumping up almost to vet two. Paul is getting very desperate to hit the VPs now, pumping in his Royal Engineers before it gets capped. Oh, I actually didn't notice he put in the command vehicle on his AC. That was a yeah. recon that was um, yeah, and it gives his flying mortar around, pits. calling it again. Yep. Plus it gives his mortar pits the buff if he keeps it right there. Both of his mortar pits will be better. These snipers are just being such a pain for Paul. He has no real counter to them right now. Yeah, they're just raining havoc. It's like Paul can't even cap anything because as soon as he tries to cap a VP, he's just getting sniped, sniped, and after the first set of snipes with two snipers, you have to retreat instantly or else your spawn's gone. Well, I mean, even had said how how badly, how bad luck Paul's gotten in this game, you know, with the AEC pathing in the south, although one losing one was definitely going to happen because that was in the rear armor. The other one, the pathing was kind of off. He also did lose a Vickers at the north with his first air supply operation but you know even having said that it doesn't excuse having 300 fuel float with no mainline battle tanks on the field i'm sure he could have pumped out a comet with this fuel or maybe multiple cromwells um, See, it may have given him better be... map control it could have been a completely different game considering devam has no tanks of his own yeah the comet's still a little bit far off um because it'd be what 120 to tech and then 50, 170, 100, 115 five. to attack. And then yeah, a bit off, but five. multiple Cromwells isn't off. Of yeah, yeah, he could have almost two Cromwells. Actually, probably exactly two Cromwells right now. And with that, Paul's Cromwell's just going to call it down to 20 VPs, triple cap, surrenders. Uh, DevM still had 200 in fuel, so he could have brought in a Panther if he needed to. Yeah, um, very well played by DevM, well played by Paul, making it to the finals again. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to defend his uh, title. Does hand it over to DevM, who has made a resurgence. We can say he's back, you know. He's acknowledged the sort of opinions the community has about him. He's renamed himself to Cash Grab DevM, you know, with the Euro sign as the E, which is quite cheeky, but funny at the same time, you know. So, it's too bad he's winning US dollars though with the Euro uh, sign. Ironic, if right? Uh, Machine yeah, was ironic. saying that earlier where he should replace the E with a dollar sign. Um, but well played by both players. I really enjoyed this game in particular. Um, good good adaptation by DevM there. Although he kind of fluked it with the teching as you mentioned earlier. The teching with the Puma. Um, but solid, solid tournament. Uh, DevM takes NA. The, the, the Beast from Portugal. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, sticking it with us here, guys. Uh, Machine took a break, so Sia's and I took over. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the tournament. I hope we were entertaining for you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, shame we had the spoiler Reno, but uh, it was still yeah. an exciting finals, especially that the MG just knocking out the two ACs. It was beautiful to watch, if not a little bit unfortunate for Paul, but. Um, either maybe the counter to the ACs is found. You just have to vet up your MGs and hope that Relic Pathing 
gives you the rear armor. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was insane. So um, I think next week is the monthly cup, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, but on next Saturday. Week, big one. Okay, on Saturday, the big one. Yeah. Okay, so top eight from both EU and NA duking it out for even more money. And it should be even better games because every, presumably everybody in the top eight of both is quite a strong players. Yeah, I'd say that's safe to assume. Definitely. And we still have the normal ESL on Sunday too then? No, I don't think so. I think okay. the is the monthly two days. It might be two days. I don't know. It's next Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday for me, anyway. So I mean, we should know this. 